Hello and welcome to Living Word, growing a family that experiences every promise of God. For more information, visit our website at livingwordonline.com. Praise God. Well, let's open up in prayer. There's four things that I'm going to cover uh, tonight. And uh, first of all, the power is in the blood of Christ Jesus. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the power of the cross and nailing it to the cross. We're going to talk about life is in the blood. We're going to talk about the rewards that are in when you apply the blood of Jesus in your life. So we're going to cover those four things tonight. So are we excited about it? Amen. Hallelujah. So, Father God, now as I pray, I thank you that there is an outpouring of your Spirit of God in the house of the Lord. We're in that time of the outpouring of your Spirit, the time of, of jubilee where, Father God, now that you pour out your Spirit, that we will move in revelation and wisdom, that signs and wonders will be happening in our lives, that, Father God, now everything that Christ Jesus has done is now ours and we have the kingdom of God in us and we rejoice in that and we release our faith to expect the supernatural to happen in the house of the Lord. And we thank you, Father God, for your word. We love your word. And so, Holy Spirit, pour out your spirit of revelation on us that we might receive revelation of your word tonight that will transform our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. So we want to talk about the power that is in the blood. You know, first of all, we look at Colossians chapter uh, 2.14. And it, it, it says this, you know, it says that he canceled every legal violation that ha was against us, didn't he, on our records. He also, I'm just going to paraphrase it, he also took away the old rest of warrants that were there and he de he canceled those things he canceled and he deleted in our lives hallelujah erasing the all sin of our lives at the cross of calvary this is at the cross with the outpouring of the blood of christ jesus in your lives on the cross of calvary you were totally free from every sickness every disease every curse every generational curse everything that could come against you that jesus the word of god says cursed is a man that's hung on a tree on the cross of calvary jesus was hung at the cross of calvary and he took on your curse so that now you're in the new covenant by the blood of Jesus. Jesus took his blood after the death, burial, and resurrection. He took his blood into the holy of holies. This all-powerful blood that overcome the enemy. And he put it on the mercy seat. Sprinkled it seven times. Say, it is finished. It is done. And Jesus made blood covenant with the Father God for you. That Hallelujah, that now we're in that place and we get born again. We come into that place of the kingdom of God, not because of what we do, not because of what we have done, but because of what Christ has already done on our behalf. And so we are, it says that it's all been deleted from us, the curse, and it, it cannot be retrieved. Cannot be retrieved. That's what the scripture says there. And so, anyway, and it's talking about the cross. But it goes on to say this. I just love this. Everything we once were in Adam, the first Adam, huh, has been placed onto his cross and nailed permanently. Where, what is it? Nailed permanently as it was a public display of cancellation. In my life, I just want to give the testimony because the Bible says this, and that's in Revelation says that we, that we overcome him, right, by the blood of Jesus. And so I just want to read that scripture. It says, and they overcome him. Who is him? The devil by the blood of the lamb. That's the blood of Jesus. So the resurrection power is in the blood of Jesus. Everything is in the blood. You know, our doctor that we uh, 
see once a year. We only see him once a year because we walk in the, the health of Jesus. We're not on any medication. We're healthy. And because Jesus gave us health. And so he takes 15, 16 vials of blood from us. And, you know, I'm giving blood. That's what I'm doing. Hallelujah. And, uh, and, and he can tell what's going on in our body by the blood. So the blood is the revealer of all things in our lives. Praise God. And so uh, when I was 45, I got hit with rheumatoid arthritis. I could barely move. It's a, I'm a nurse, so I know exactly when the doctor said, you have rheumatoid arthritis, I knew exactly what he was saying. It's an incurable, crippling disease. They, have, they, they can't help you. They can make you comfortable, but that's all they can do. And so the doctor declared that, and he left, and I went, oh, my goodness. God, if I ever needed you, I need you now. And so uh, they took my blood. He called me up. He said, your scores are extremely high, and you will, be in, you will cripple very quickly. You'll be in a wheelchair within six months. And, and when he gave me that report, of course, I, I started to cry. That was not something I wanted to hear. And so he said, I'll set you up with a specialist. Well, anyway, this is my story. So every day, Dr. Tom would pick me up out of bed and take me into the pool, our swimming pool that was a heated pool. And so I would then begin to visualize. I began to see myself riding a bike. I began to see myself do things I couldn't do. I began, I never skied before, but I began to see myself skiing. I began to see myself running. I saw myself do all kinds of things that I couldn't do. I visualized it. Hallelujah. I saw, I saw the, the harvest. I saw the end product. I saw it done in the unseen, though in the visible, that wasn't going on. But I was living by the word of God, by, by the promises of God. And then I would see that rheumatoid arthritis. I would see the cross, and I would see the word rheumatoid arthritis nailed at the cross. At the cross, where it was nailed, where the blood of Jesus, when Jesus, it says that by his stripes we were healed. We were healed. So I was healed by that. And I would see that. And that, that the stripes represent the blood, that his back was so torn up that it went right to his bone, and the blood was coming out. And when they put him on the cross and threw him on the ground in that dirt that got into his, his skin and, and they started to put those, those nails through his, his arms, uh, his wrists, that's where they put it, that that nail, that nail was saying that sickness, that disease, that plague, that poverty, that curse, that was on your life, that baggage that went come down for generations, that addiction, that situation was nailed there, nailed permanently. Hallelujah. And I would see it. It's permanently there. And so, praise God. And, and so just letting you know that uh, we were talking about it. That was our 25th anniversary in August, and we had steps here. I couldn't go up those steps. Somebody had to help me up those steps to do our 25th anniversary. And But by October. Now, this was July when they said, this is what's happened to you, and this is your destiny, the doctor said, you know. But what God said my destiny is no. And so by October, I forgot I even had it. By the time I, I was going, every week I had to go to the specialist in October. I was just happy, jumping along. Here am I. I don't even know why I'm going in there. Because I was healed. The doctor looked at me and said, and he looked at me and said, I don't know what's going on, but you have no arthritis. 
I will never see you again. That was over 30 years ago. I have no. Look at my hands are straight and uh, there's no arthritis in my being. Because God says in Psalms 91, those that dwell under the shadow of the Almighty, no, what does it say? No harm will defall. Of no harm will defall them and no plague will come near their tent. No plague can come near us in the name of Jesus because of the blood of Jesus, power in the blood of Jesus. We need to apply the blood. We need to fellowship with his sufferings. That means go to the cross. See how he suffered for you. See the outpouring of his blood. You know that he, all of his blood was drained from him. And then they, they stabbed him in the side and out poured the blood and then the water. Why? Because the water was getting, making sure all blood was gone from his body, poured out on the cross for you and I. And so the word of God tells us this. And so first of all, the power of the cross where the blood was shed on the cross of Calvary, nailed permanently that the blood could flow from his hands, from his feet, and there was a, a, a display of total cancellation of any curse that would come against your life was dealt with. Now let's talk about, there's life in the blood. You know that if somebody has a sick blood, not making healthy blood cells in their body, that they do a bone transplant. The bone marrow transplant, bone marrow transplant is where your blood is made. And so they have to kill your, your bone marrow because it's not making healthy blood. That can be if you have leukemia or some, some kind of a disease that is preventing you from having healthy blood. So they have to get a donor that matches you. All right? And that... So, so when you have a, so that this donor will give you a new bone marrow transplant, your bone marrow will be no more, your DNA there is gone, and you get a new DNA. So the doctor would say to you, let's say her name is Donna, and the doctor would say to Donna, Donna, we found a donor, matches you. So we're going, you're going to go to sleep, and who you are, will be no more. You'll be gone. When you wake up, you will take on the identity of the donor. You will, your, your skin color can change, your eye colors can change, your hair can change, but you are now a new person. Hallelujah. That is a picture to us. When we receive Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior, our blood that was diseased, that was sick, is now dead and gone. Our, that DNA is no more. And when I receive Christ, I take on a new DNA. I take on new blood, and I am now in his likeness and image. Who I was before I received Christ is no more. But now... I live and move and have my being in him. When you see me, you see Jesus. Hallelujah. When, when they see you, they see Jesus. Because you have the DNA of Jesus now. You are one with him. You've taken on his identity. You have the divine nature of God Almighty in you. Praise God. Is that powerful? And so as I said here, they overcame him, Satan, by the blood of Jesus. So who, how do you overcome the enemy? By the blood of the Lamb, by the blood of Jesus, and the word of their testimony. Hallelujah. The blood speaks. The blood is prophetic. So the word of your testimony. I just gave you my testimony that I spoke out prophetically to you the power of the blood of Jesus, that prophetic word now went out to you. The testimony of the prophetic word of the blood of Jesus. And we love not our life unto death. Well, when I received Christ, I died. It's gone. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, is this blessing? You turn to your neighbor and says, boy, there's power in the blood of Jesus. So let's talk about what is the reward of the blood. Now we know that life is in the blood. We have, when we receive Christ, we have life and life more abundantly. But now what is the reward? Well, the, prom the blood of Jesus promised you protection. So we go back to the time of Exodus, and it's 12, uh, 13, that talks about that we know, just giving you a little background here, that Moses did uh, nine miracles uh, in Egypt to get the people out of Egypt, his people out of slavery, out of the hands of the enemy. But those nine miracles could not set them free. But when, hallelujah, when God said to Moses, now put the blood of the lamb, which is a picture of Christ Jesus, on the doorposts, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, praise God. And that it says, this, the blood will be a sign to you. This will be a sign to you. And it talks about, God says to them in one of the scriptures, and you stay in the house. The protection is in the house. If you get out of the house, you're not protected. Stay in the house, and that blood that is over the house will protect you. Hallelujah. Well, what is that about? Well, there's pictures. All the way through the Old Testament are pictures of from the beginning to the end until the Christ came in the fullness of time. God had pictures of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of, of Christ Jesus. He saw continuously the, the harvest, the, the, the birth of Christ. That harvest, the birth of the vision that God had. And God says to us, you look at the harvest. You don't look at the, what you see in the natural. You look at what you don't see. And God is just asking you to do what he does. So all the way through the Old Testament, there's pictures of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And uh, it said Moses saw it. It says that, that he saw the death, burial, and resurrection. He saw into the invisible. Abraham saw the death, burial, and resurrection. And they believed that they received the grace of God in their lives. Hallelujah. And it says in Galatians, Abraham preached the gospel. And that we know David saw the death, burial, and resurrection, believed it, and entered into it. And so God kept having these pictures all the time. Job saw it. He said, my Redeemer lives. And the word of God said that God said to him, I will restore the days of your youth. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm believing that because I got many years to go to preach the word of God. And so... I'm under the Abrahamic covenant. The Bible says against all hope, in hope, he believed God and it was credited to him with righteousness. And what did he believe? He believed for him and Sarah to be rejuvenated, to get back to the days of their youth, to have an Isaac at 100 years old and Sarah was 90. Hallelujah, we're under the Abrahamic covenant. I believe it. Hallelujah. I'm just going to, yes, I'm going to be hopping and leaping and shouting for Jesus at 120. And I'm going to just say, okay, I'm totally healthy. Well, I've lived in the days of my youth. My latter years are better than my former. And I'm going to just lay down and say, Jesus, time to go. I'm just going to pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I get, well, you know, that's what the word says. Now, I know we're not, we're going to die one day. So I'm not, be, I'm not talking about no death, but I'm going to just pass from this life to the next. Praise God. Well, a hallelujah. I might as well claim what the, the covenant of Abraham is, rejuvenation. That's what it is. I have got a teaching on that, anti-aging. But let's move on. So God saw all these things. And then, against all hope, God, right, in 
and in, in the vision of the unseen and seeing the death, burial, and resurrection for us to get born again by the blood of Jesus to come into covenant with God to get free of the original sin of Adam in our life. And uh, hallelujah. Then the fullness of time came. And guess what happened? Jesus was born. Jesus in the fullness. God saying to you, don't throw in the towel. Faith and patience, you inherit the land. Just begin to keep seeing the end product. Keep seeing it, clamoring it, speaking out, declaring the word of God. Have scriptures and do that. Be like God is, because he's only asking to do it how he did. He had to wait 2,000 years for the birth of Christ Jesus. And he said, you know, time is our enemy. We get all caught up in time. Well, then... It didn't happen when we thought it was going to happen. Then we throw in the towel and we quit because we, God didn't say faith and time. He said faith and patience, you inherit the promise. You, we are fighters. We are people that fight the good fight of faith. We're perseverance. We hold on to the prize. And we don't care. We're like a dog with a new bone. I am not letting go of this because in the fullness of time, the promise is coming in my life hallelujah by the blood of jesus so he said no and then it goes on to say this so in the house okay i've, I've learned praise god i got three minutes okay in the house what did jesus say to peter right matthew 16 what did he say he's because peter had a revelation of the christ and he said to him upon this rock what what is upon this rock? The revelation of Christ Jesus. I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not overtake you. So what did it say there? You have to stay in the house. If you get planted in the house of the Lord, hallelujah, you will flourish, the Bible said. You will bear fruit in your old age, hallelujah, and your sap will be flowing. That's the promise. You stay in the house, and the gates of hell cannot overtake you. And so this is what the Word of God is saying. Get planted in the house of the Lord, and you will flourish. Now, now we are people. We are, yes, we're born by the blood of Jesus, but we all have baggage. We're brothers and sisters, and you know what? Brothers and sisters, you know what? They kind of quarrel at times. And you know, iron sharpens iron. And so we have baggage. And so in the house of the Lord, you're going to deal with all kinds of things that are in the house because we're family. And the devil wants to get you out of the house because if you don't stay in the house, you know, you have no protection out there. And so in the house is a time to get rid of your baggage. It's a time to grow in the unconditional love that God's given us because they'll know well, we're Christians by our love and it's a time to have unconditional forgiveness. The blood of Jesus speaks of forgiveness and so there's no strings attached. You know, I had a dream. Can I be honest with you? I had a dream and uh, this dream was, it was, wasn't a positive, okay, but it was from God. And so I heard somebody say this, and I thought, oh, I like what they said. So I'm going to say that to God. So God, I know that you're good for your word, and your promises are yes and amen. If your promises aren't working in my life, then it's not you, because you don't lie. You're good for your word. It's me. Now, I didn't think the promises weren't working. I was, and I was just saying a prayer that I thought was a good prayer. Well, guess what? I had two dreams, and in those dreams, they said I, I had unforgiveness to two different people. Now I thought I, I didn't know I had that. That was like a surprise to me. And I thought I, I always say I forgive them, I forgive them. But guess what? I had strings attached. I thought they should come and tell me they're sorry. And God, I said, I guess I don't understand your forgiveness. I don't understand that, God. You're going to have to teach me by the Holy Spirit what forgiveness is. And boy, I tell you, God taught me that, un, that unconditional forgiveness. No strings attached. You give forgiveness, 
you you just you just give it because God gave it to you and you give it to them and guess what I got totally set free of that in my life but why did I go there I don't know God just wanted me to give that testimony out there somebody well the blood speaks of forgiveness that's why that's what it says here the blood that contains speaks forgiveness the blood of Christ Jesus unconditional forgiveness no strings attached I just choose to forgive in the blood of Jesus now the word of God tells us this in Hebrews 12 24 says Jesus is a mediator that means he defends us of the end of the new covenant and of the blood that is sprinkled that speaks of a better word a better thing so hallelujah the devil you know he's a legalist the word of God tells us in Ephesians 6 that he has plans he has strategies against us yes he's deceiver and so he knows what to do he knows the things he's the accuser of the brethren but we have Jesus the enemy comes he's a legalist he says you broke this law you did this wrong you said these things these are your thoughts and Jesus we claim the blood that speaks of a better thing Jesus our, our mediator says no 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 I took that at the cross and he defends us by the blood of Jesus and we have our advocate the Holy Spirit that's there and guess what we stand on the blood of Jesus and the enemy the powers in the blood of Jesus to get him under your feet apply the blood on everything the Bible tells us this that the blood of Jesus okay faith in that rest in the blood of Jesus we know Genesis 9 14 says the blood of Christ is purified cleanses your conscience from dead works to serve the living God guess what we're to think on the good the beautiful the loving the praiseworthy things but you know the enemy comes in there and he begins to bring uh, yeah, negative thoughts, dead thoughts to us, and wants us to come into agreement with this. And if we come into agreement with it, we sign the ticket to what the enemy wants to steal that day from us. But I put the blood of Jesus on my mind. I say, no, the power of the blood of Jesus gets that gone, and I'm not signing the ticket to that. Devil, that's not my harvest. Hallelujah. So the blood of Jesus will get you free from those negative thoughts. The blood of Jesus, this is another scripture, and the blood of Jesus gives us access into the Holy of Holies. By the blood of Jesus we go in. So we apply the blood of Jesus and we go into the presence of God and we have blood covenant and it says the, our hearts are filled with assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled with the blood of Jesus from an evil conscious. Oh, the subconscious has things, it's like a computer, and it has things stored in, in us that have happened to us, and addictions that have happened, or whatever else. But the blood of Jesus sets us free from it. Hallelujah. Apply the blood of Jesus. You know, I knew of this person that had eye problems really bad, and they began to put the blood of Jesus on her eyes, sprinkled it on her eyes, and she entered into perfect vision. By There's power in the blood. I tell you, I know me putting that rheumatoid arthritis on the cross of Calvary, acknowledging the power that's in the blood of Jesus that overcame the enemy, that I am today walking jumping leaping in the house of God hallelujah the blood the blood of Jesus hallelujah praise God if you'd like to right now stand and receive now me praying over you to receive the power of the blood of Jesus now over your life and begin to meditate on it begin to allow it to work in your life father God you see these that are standing right now and they receive now the power that is in the blood of Jesus now 
they receive it father god now that it overcame the enemy that in the blood of jesus contains the the miracle Elaham power, resurrection power of Jesus in the blood of Jesus now. They receive it now, sprinkled on their heart to set them free from an evil conscience. The blood of Jesus to sprinkle on their minds to set them free from negative thoughts that they can serve the living God. The blood of Jesus that prophesies to them now, that speaks of the forgiveness of God, the unconditional forgiveness, no strings of attached the blood of Jesus overcomes in their life the enemy in the name of Jesus they receive it they see those situations that are negative nailed to the cross they name it and they see it nailed to the cross to be totally canceled because of the blood of Jesus the cross in Jesus name amen Ooh, there's a power of God. You may be seated. If you haven't received Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to pray with you right now. There's so much power in this place. Oh, God's just moving supernaturally. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just pray with me, everyone. Dear Father God, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask your son Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, I ask you now, Father God, to baptize me in the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. We introduce to you Living Word Virtual Church Community. Each week, we come together during the live stream, chatting with each other through live comment sections. Then, during the week, our virtual church community reconnects in online share groups to discuss the weekend service and study the Word. To sign up, visit the Living Word Virtual Church Community page on our website. We'll see you there.